All right, good morning, fifth grade. Wipe those Christmas vacation sleepies out of your eyes. Get ready for lesson 58, writing quotients as mixed numbers. And remember, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction, not with a remainder. So this should pretty much be review. But there's a couple of things at the end that you're definitely going to want to see. So hang in there with me. But starting off, remember, any remainder is written as the numerator of the fraction. The divisor is the denominator. Because the old little guy way of dividing 17 divided by 4, that would give us 4 remainder 1. But now that we can do it as a mixed number, the divisor of 4 is the denominator. The remainder is the numerator. So if they ask for the quotient as a mixed number, you don't want 4 remainder 1. You want 4 and 1 fourth. But they're also going to ask you to start applying that in different word problems. So let's start off with something easy, though, since we're just coming back from vacation. Write the quotient with a mixed number. Okay, always figure out where you're going to start dividing. Six divides into seven one whole time. Multiplies back for six, and it subtracts for one. Bring down your next number and plant it right next to your subtraction answer. We are back to round two of dividing. This time we're dividing 17 divided by 6. 6 times what gets you close to 17? It's only going to be 2. Multiply that back. 2 times 6 is 12. And our last step would be to subtract. I don't have any more numbers to bring down. If you notice, I have a quotient number right above that 7, and I have one right above that other 7, right? But I don't want to just write remainder 5. The remainder is the numerator. The divisor, that 6, is my dividend. This is 12 and 5th, 6, if I write it as a mixed number. Let's do it all over again. This time we're going 31 divided by 8. The tricky part is remembering where to start dividing. Am I going to write a quotient number above that 3? No, 3 is too small. i got to go all the way into 31. So now I ask myself, 8 times what? gets me close to 31. In this case, my answer would be 3. I multiply that back. The quotient times the divisor, 3 times 8, is 24. And I'm getting ready now to subtract. 31 minus 24. Hey, that's going to leave me with 7, isn't it? I do not have any more numbers to bring down. So instead of saying remainder 7, 7 is going to be my numerator, and my divisor of 8 is going to be my denominator. 3 and 7 eighths. Hang in there with me. This is just for some people. We'll do one more review and then some serious stuff you got to see at the end. 121 this time, divided by 7. I'm going to go and start dividing into that 12, aren't I? Looks to me like 7 is only going to go into 12 one time. Multiply it back for 7. Subtract it out, leaving you with 5. Get ready to bring down the extra number in the dividend and park it right next to our subtraction answer. And welcome to part 2 of dividing. This time, 51 divided by 7. 7 times what gets me close to 51? In that case, the answer is going to be 7. 
7 times 7 multiplied back is going to give us 49. And 51 minus 49 is going to leave us with 2. So 2 is the remainder, so it is the new numerator. 7 is the divisor, so that's my denominator. 17 and 2 sevenths if I write it as a mixed number. So that's generally review. Take a look at this. Start off with a story problem. A 15-foot board is cut into four equal lengths. First question mark. How long is each piece? Well, let's just think about this as a division problem. I got a 15-foot hunk of board, and I'm cutting it into four equal pieces. Yeah, that sounds like dividing to me. So let's just go 15 divided by 4. 15 divided by 4. Sounds like it's going to go in there three times. Multiply it back for 12 and subtract it for 3, correct? Let's write that answer as a mixed number. Instead of 3 remainder 3, that doesn't even make sense. It would have to be 3 and three-fourths of a foot, right? Because we started off with a 15-foot long board. So three and three-fourths feet. But take a look at this part. How many total inches is each piece? I got this part of the answer in feet. And I got to get three and three fourths feet converted into inches. Well, let's remember that there's 12 inches in each foot, right? So that three feet, three groups of 12, sounds to me like it's 36 inches so far. But what to do about that? three-fourths of a foot. This is where drawing out the rectangle, right? 12 inches in one foot. There's a fourth, there's a fourth, there's three-fourths, four-fourths. So let's go ahead and divide by the denominator right now. One-fourth of 12 is going to be three, right? There's three inches. Three more inches, three more inches, and three more inches. And we're talking about three-fourths, right? So three-fourths, three plus three more plus three more, that sounds like a total of nine more inches. It was 36 inches for the three feet. And now I got to go and add on nine more inches for the total inches, right? 36 inches plus nine more inches. That's going to sound like 45 inches to me. It's just about that easy. I'm technically not teaching you anything new. This is just combining two skills we've gone over previously. Check out this one. A group of four friends collected aluminum cans and received $23 from the recycling center. They shared the money equally. There's your clue that it's got to be dividing, right? Write the quotient that represents the amount of money each friend receives. So you got $23 and four friends sharing it out equally. I probably better get my dollar sign in there, right? $23 being shared by four friends equally. Well, four divides into 23 five whole times multiplies back for 20 and it's gonna 
subtract for 3. So, yeah, technically you could say they each got 5 and 3 fourths dollars. But anybody ever really say that, hey, buddy, you got 5 and 3 fourths dollars I can borrow? No. We now have to go and find out how are we going to express that quotient as dollars and cents. So we know that there's a hundred cents in one dollar, right? Set up your little rectangle again. I'm dealing in fourths again. And one fourth of a hundred cents, that's 25 if you think about it, right? If you split a dollar between four friends, everyone's going to get a quarter, 25 cents. So I got 25 cents and 25 cents and 25 cents. And now let's figure out the fraction part. I'm talking about three-fourths, right? So let's section off three of those fourths. I have 25 plus 25 more plus 25 more. That's sounding to me like it's 75 cents, right? So instead of saying five and three fourths dollars, five and three fourths dollars is really five dollars and 75 cents, right? That's not too tough. Some of these you might even be able to figure out in your mind, but if you are stuck, write out the rectangle and figure it out that way. So that is the end. I guarantee we had tougher math lessons than this before we went on vacation, right? But as always, you're gonna want a piece of scratch paper for the Socrative quiz, and good luck.